What is up guys? I hope you're all good. Here in Clonmel, County Tipperary. So living here for the next six weeks. I've been here for one week already because um, I am on placement. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I study physiotherapy. I'm at the end of my third year. So I'm at placement here in Clonmel and South Tip General Hospital. I'm doing like a neuro slash so neurology slash care of the elderly style placement. So working with patients who have had strokes, maybe they've just had falls, maybe MS, Parkinson's, but a lot of just generally deconditioned elderly people who have come into the hospital for whatever reason and need to work on their mobility. And when I say mobility, I don't mean the stretching and fucking fancy exercises that we talk about in the fitness industry. I mean actually being able to walk, to transfer from a bed to a chair, to stand up without falling, working on balance, all that sort of stuff. So that's the day to day at the moment, um, along with triage of course. And what I wanted to do was give you guys a kind of a run through my shopping, because you know, we're always banging on a triage about, you know, maintaining a nutrient dense whole food diet. And I think a lot of people struggle to expand, you know, beyond just chicken, mince, broccoli, carrots, you know, it's like, when they think of a nutrient dense diet, they don't really know what it means. They just think of the classical kind of bro foods that would go around in the fitness industry, you know, your chicken, rice and broccoli. So it's kind of associated with that like anal clean eating approach where you're only allowed to eat certain foods. And what I want to show you is, you know, some of the shopping that I picked up and to show you that, you know, eating a wholesome nutrient dense diet does not have to be boring and can be incredibly varied. Like we believe that is how you should implement flexible dieting. You should implement it to allow you to have foods that, you know, are varied. So to have a variety of foods in your diet that allow you a broad spectrum of micronutrients, of different sources of protein and fiber and types of fats, etc. So essentially we want variety within the context of a calorie appropriate diet that meets your macronutrient targets. So obviously it's not just a question of variety. Like if you're, if you have variety, but all of the foods are crap, then it's probably not the best idea. We do want to ensure we are getting a full spectrum of vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, etc. So that's what I want to show you. So let's get stuck into it. I went to Iceland and Marks and Spencers. Uh, the overall shop is quite cheap. Iceland cost me like 39 euro and Marks and Spencers I think was like 18 because I just picked up a couple of bits. Um, and yeah, you could make it cheaper. Don't shop in Marks and Spencers if you want cheap stuff. Um, Iceland is very cheap if you happen to have one near you. So I'm just gonna pull everything out of the bags and throw them on the floor and then I have to pick them up again after um, doing it all for you guys, you know. So. Here we've got some extra lean venison sausages. You know, when we think of red meat, we always think of steak and it doesn't really go far beyond that. But you know, if you shop around, there are a variety of other meats that are actually quite tasty that you can actually indulge in. So there's some venison sausages, some buffalo quarter pounders, same story. Tender stem broccoli. Obviously I went to Iceland, so everything is pretty much frozen, but uh, yeah. Tender stem broccoli, you can obviously buy this fresh as well, this is frozen. And people always wonder about frozen vegetables, whether they are good or bad, and it's like, meh, they're neutral. You know, you're eating vegetables, it's a beneficial thing. Through boiling, you can lose some nutrients, so if you do want to eat some of your vegetables raw, that's a good idea. Um, but I really wouldn't be, wouldn't be getting too bogged down in that once you're getting your 8 to 12 servings of veg per day. Veg slash fruit. Um, Avocado halves, again, frozen, convenient, decent source of monounsaturated fats and that there potassium, which we kind of, a lot of us don't get enough pot potassium in the diet, so including more foods that are high in potassium can be a good idea. Dun, dun, dun. Basic lean mints, too easy. These were, before they lost their thing, ostrich sausages. Ostrich. Pretty key, you know, and, and people always talk about the eth ethical question of eating meat because they're like, would you kill that thing looking into its eyes? And when it comes to an ostrich, yes, I would. I would behead that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that doesn't trigger it. Frozen mixed peppers, again, very convenient, very easy. Fling them into the pan with the mince, stir it all up, too easy. These as well, you know, 
frozen sliced red onion. Again, gonna go into the pan with some peppers and some mince and it's gonna be a pretty easy cook. Multi-greens rice steam bags. So essentially there's a couple of different types of greens in here, broccoli, curly kale, spinach, courgette, and seaweed. And again, just a very convenient way of getting in vegetables, filling up your plate, ensuring that you do have high volume in your diet. And so it, like, it's not just like, when it comes to vegetables, it's not just about the nutrients they offer, but also the volume that they offer. So if you can become more full with less calories, for example, replacing regular rice with something like this, then it's gonna be much easier to manage your overall caloric intake. Blocky, broccoli florets, nothing too fancy. Dun, dun, dun. Frozen butternut squash chunks, decent. I really like butternut squash. Similar to sweet potato, if you like sweet potato, you'll probably like butternut squash. If you like carrots, you'll probably like butternut squash. Um, but slightly lower in overall calorie density, which is one of my priorities at the moment. So I am trying to lose a bit of body fat over the next six weeks, so a very brief diet. Um, so I'm choosing foods that are offering me a lot of volume and a lot of micronutrition that are a bit lower in calories. Pineapple chunks frozen. Dun, dun, dun. More butternut squash. Cherry tomatoes, well actually these are plum tomatoes, or santini. Um, they're like one of my favorite foods and I just eat them pretty much as a snack. Two packets of frozen blueberries, I generally have these in porridge. Five grain crumpets, I got these in M&S. I actually really like crumpets with a bit of butter on them. Um, not gonna try and come up with some fancy justification as to why you should have them. I just like them, you know? Um, so that's why I picked them up. Butter, good old Kerrygold. And then the last few bits, three packets of this baby beetroot. And duck eggs. Now, if you've never had duck eggs, they are much bigger than regular eggs. And that's pretty key. So yeah, that's the shop. That is the majority of what I'll be consuming, I guess. I do have some nut butter, some whey protein, and some oats in the house already. Um, so that will be kind of added to those meals as well. But overall, you know, I am on fairly low calories at the moment versus what I would normally diet on if I was dieting for a longer period of time. So I'm consuming about 2,600 calories per day, which will lead to a pretty fast rate of fat loss for me. Um, and again, that, that's something that's gonna be completely individual and that you have to assess. And, and even for myself, like my, the caloric intake that is appropriate for me to diet on is gonna vary at different points in time. Like at the moment, because I'm working in the hospital, I'm very, very active on a day-to-day -day basis. And because I'm in Clonmel and where I'm living, I have to walk quite a lot each day. So my steps range between 15 and 20,000 steps per day. And my resistance training, so my actual strength training will be ranging from three to four sessions per week over the next six weeks. So I've got that baseline activity. So when it comes to actually activity from a fat loss perspective, I'm very well covered. Like I don't necessarily need to bump up my energy expenditure through additional cardio or anything like that because it's well covered within the parameters of my daily activity. Um, and then resistance training, the only reason I'm not doing like more training than that is because three to four days is a, about as much as I can practically do at the moment. So there are two reasons for that. The first one being stress, you know, because I do have quite a lot of psychological stress, but also, you know, physical stress from walking 20,000 steps a day. Because my stress load is already quite high because of, you know, working at triage and working at the hospital. And, you know, the thing about placement as well that people don't appreciate, it's not just like working an eight hour day. It's because you're actually marked on everything that you do in that placement is a marked thing. It's something you're assessed on. So working in the hospital, you're being assessed. You have to perform at your best. And the majority of the time you're in an uncomfortable situation that you're not used to. Um, and that you really are, are kind of uncomfortable in. So there is a degree of, you know, the psychological stress of being on placement is much higher than if you were doing the same tasks as part of a regular job. So, you know, I, I do have to factor that in and keep that in mind as well, um, because it is quite a lot of a psychological stress load overall. Um, but the other thing is simply a time thing. 
because I'm doing both things, I don't have time to train as much as I would like to. So three to four sessions is as much as I can kind of practically do. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of me at the moment in terms of my training, in terms of my nutrition. One of my big goals on placement this time is to not let my sleep go to shit. Um, I've never been on placement before and not sacrifice sleep in terms of, you know, getting like five to six hours per night. So at the moment, my big goal is to get at least seven hours of sleep per night because I really want to make sure that I am actually prioritizing my health. So that's, that, that is the overarching theme and everything that I am trying to do. You know, I'm not hammering resistance training six days per week because I know that would probably be more detrimental than helpful to my health. So three to four days per week, perfect. You know, I'm, I've got the activity component covered. So from there, it's really about ensuring that nutrition is very on point in terms of you know satisfying all of my needs and that i am taking time to actually sleep enough since that is one of the big pillars of your actual health but also your muscle mass your fat loss etc if you're not sleeping enough you're kind of playing yourself and i've done that in the past so yeah that's it for this video guys i kind of just wanted to take this one as a bit of an an introduction to where i'm at at the moment because i do want to do some more vlogs over the coming weeks if any of you are on placement or in college and have any questions about maybe how to deal with certain situations, how to, I don't know, deal with the the stress that overwhelms you and stuff like that, I'm more than happy to discuss that because I can obviously relate. Um, and yeah, that, that's me for the moment. Gonna be making some more videos, gonna be chatting about some topics. I want you guys to lead them. Um, so do ask questions, you know, I want it to be kind of like a a less formal version of the triage militia, you know, our, our, our membership website and the Facebook group to support that. You know, we kind of let the triage militia, the Facebook group be led by the questions that people ask. And we, we open up a lot of discussion there based on things that people ask. So I want this to be similar. I want you guys to ask me questions so that I can kind of sit down and answer those questions without having to make, you know, fancy, well-edited videos because I'm, I'm realistically not going to be able to. Um, so yeah. Catch you in the next video guys, and of course, be happy.